Good evening. This is the Rutland Town Planning Commission, and uh, this is Thursday, August 4th, 2022. Let's start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we've got we've got Dana, Howard, Sherman, Mary Beth, and myself as regular members, and Norm and Jim as the alternates make seven so everybody can vote this evening that's here and I think everyone is here or virtual so let's start tonight with the approval of the agenda move to approve sure. second okay any discussion Anyone want to offer any changes or additions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, uh, no public tonight for public comment. So we move down to new business. And we've got a couple things that were sent out maybe twice now, but we didn't take them out pick them up last time bill because we weren't really fam yeah. familiar with what or where they came from yeah so we've got we don't really need to discuss the existing flood hazard regulations although i can bring that up later vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the select board yeah. but you have tweaked the informational building permit <clears throat> And you've added a new flood hazard area development permit. Yes. So the they're they're both kind of related. So I, I was going through ordinances and just looking through different stuff and looked looked at the flood hazard one and where it said permit required, and I'm like, I don't remember that. So I looked at it, and sure enough, we are re we have a a permit required for properties in in flood zones uh so it goes by the fema flood map designation uh so i basically just went to the went to the uh, our regulations and created the permit out of what it's asking for um since posting it online we've had two brought in already um that didn't take long so huh. um mm. And so because of that, because it deals with basically construction, I added uh, some sections to our informational building permit about require about, about checking this. So when someone fills out the informational permit, I have on there, is your address within the FEMA zone? Give the, give the link. If yes, you have to fill out the permit. If no, then you're all set. Uh, and I asked for a copy of the map to to prove that. Uh, of the two, uh, one both one said yes and they were. One said no and they were. So I had to call them back and say, yeah, you really actually have to do this. So well, this is my project isn't in the area. Doesn't doesn't it doesn't specify the project. It specifies your property. So they did that. It's not it's not a huge thing, but it, there is some work behind it to to do this. So these also get are are going to be recorded. So that way there's a record of us acknowledging construction in a flood zone or a potential flood zone. So like our driveway permits have a permit book in, in the vault, these will go in there too. So they'll be part of the part of the record. So part of the permit fee is the cost of the recording in the vault. With that second individual, uh, what was the difference between the, where the project was and where it he was, resided? He, he was putting in a pool and he was putting it behind his house, which when you look at the parcel, the house and the pool are not in the FEMA flood <laughs> designation on the map, but it's on his parcel. His parcel is affected by the flood zone. So erring on the side of cautions, because otherwise I don't want to 
have to get into the level of detail that we're measuring to see where the project is versus that like that's just that's too much extra work so it's just if your parcel is affected you file the permit and it's not a big deal i mean it's we're not looking for a lot of money um but yeah so that's that's part of it so um and we have hard copies of all the fema maps here but it's far easier to use their their web tool it brings you right to the address and it's all set gives you all the information you need okay so the the reason behind this is to make sure that you know we're covered by additional sewer lines or water lines or um it lists a statement of purpose and that's what i'm going by so page one lists its statement of purpose is to minimize damage and and things like that in flood zone so that's why it exists and i believe it goes back to uh, I'm, I'm assuming it goes back to reimbursement rates if we have these we get a certain level and we were talking about the other night about the river corridor you know that's a different level but um this was it's there i mean it's it's there so we we do need it and we it kind of go back to the informational building permits we've always had that requirement we've never asked for it we started asking for it in the last couple of years and now this is just bringing us farther in line so dana um <clears throat> just a couple of call them technical questions um i went looking for the flood uh, hazard area regulations but couldn't find them on the website are they on the website in our ordinance tab yeah, yeah. in the ordinance tab yeah. okay um I, I looked i couldn't i couldn't find them um anyway and what is form number two uh where is it uh down below permit fee number of gallons requested form number two from number two? Oh, excuse me from number two all right i just misread that uh where is number two where on your uh, flood hazard development permit it's the last area it says permit fee before the white space uh, about three quarters of the way down number of gallons requested from number two right after the description description of the building to be connected to the town sewer line that's not our flood hazard that's our that's our sewer connection ordinance that's our sewer allocation ordinance, our sewer allocation request. Oh, this is what you sent out. What I sent out? Yeah. Well, it's not right then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's why, I, okay. What does it say at the top? Flood hazard area development. Well, purpose. it does say water and sewer under the seal. Yeah. Well, that's very strange. So, this is what you have. That's what you got? Yeah. yeah yeah that's bizarre that's what it is oh no <laughs> well that's very Th this, is, this is the other one we got we got that's, that that's correct yeah but this is the, this is the permit okay you can it's a lot more one. extensive uh, you want to oh, put yeah. you want to just quickly put that up uh, Take yeah. a quick look at it that's very strange i don't know why that came out like that uh, everybody else got the same thing right yeah yeah oh, yeah very strange yes yeah. yes Yeah, it's gonna look a lot different. Hang on one second. I I think on the, these applications here that uh, it should note right it up in the top that it is an application that just says permit and I. I don't know whether that might confuse some people or not, but that's certainly an application. So should it say permit application? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Jim? Yeah, I can support that. <laughs> okay. So yeah, much different. Yeah, sorry, I don't I have no idea. I look that's that I never saw that on my end. I don't know why that was showed up on your end like that. That's very strange. No wonder you're confused. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. I just thought it was because I missed a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> nope. 
Yeah, permanent application. That's that's a good point. Um, this application underneath the address and phone number is yep. for permitted development, conditional use approval. Yep. We don't have that. So the uh, in the regulations, it defines those two things. Uh, permitted development, I have to approve. Conditional use, the select board has to approve. Okay, we've got a system set up so the select board can do that. It's in the regulations. It's already, everything is in there. Okay. Do you think that, excuse me, um, do you think yeah. that, it, <clears throat> that after conditional use approval, uh, some indication it's the select board, parenthesis select board approval or something? <clears throat> No, because when they drop it off, if it goes to me, I'll take care of it. If it goes to select board, I'll put it on their agenda. I, I, it doesn't, I don't want to make it more okay. complicated than it needs to be. Well, I was thinking All I need to do is fill it, fill it out, right, Bill? Yes, but oh. also, Norm, if, 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 if you, when you read the regulations, it does state that. It does state the approval. So I don't think putting it on the permit is necessary because if you, it says at the top, I have read, read and comply with the regulations. If you read them, it does state the select board has to approve it. So. Okay. Okay, and that bottom part is probably the same as what we got, right? Application received. Oh, no, it's a little bit different. Approval type needed. What else is below there? Um, where are you looking? Very bottom, the oh, box, that's the bottom. Just a Yeah. Normal, like, right. Tracking stuff. Just sign off. Yeah. Okay. So do, do we need to prove this or does this just go to the select board? We already have this. This is, this is something that should have, should have been in place essentially when, when, when this, when these regulations went into place in, I forget what year it was, I have to go back and look. 2008. That's when it should have appeared. So we're only watching you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, and back to the informational building permit, the only thing different there is checking to see if you're in the flood. Yeah. So I, had, I added um, a little section in the middle there, you know, if it's, is it within that area? Um, and then just a couple things in my approval thing at the bottom, just signing off that's verified. And, yeah. Norm. Yes, uh, Bill. I didn't hear clearly uh, one thing, so I don't know whether this, you know, what the situation is. It says estimated project dates, and I thought you said something about estimated building date. Um, so I'm a little. Com Did I hear that correctly? The project dates that that line has not changed. That's just that's for the building side of it. So if they're building, a, you know, whatever they're doing, just letting us know approximately when they expect to begin and end. No, I understand that, but and maybe I heard wrong. That's why I, I'm asking. Yeah, that's that's that that line has not changed. That's the same as it was before. Okay. Did you say something about estimated building date in, in your description in the beginning, or did I hear it incorrectly? I, I don't I don't remember. But okay, all right. Nobody else is confused. If nobody else is confused, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, no. a question. Thank you. Yep. So this is okay. So no no one has approved the informational building permit. And there is one there, and we we ju you have just made some changes. Yeah, I just I just made it so that way someone doesn't bring it in and have to go back and, and do something else. So now it's just part of the process. So if they're doing one or the other, then they're gonna to get to it, so. Okay. I guess we should uh, probably move to approve this as change, the informational building permit. So um, just a clarifying question, um, since Jim, raise the question about whether it should say it's an application. Should that be also say application at the top? I mean, 
if just for consistency purposes, if it if this is the application for the permit, it's not the permit itself, then what Jim observed about the uh, flood hazard area development permit, I would think it would apply to, yeah. to that. Yeah. Yes, no, anybody? Seems that we make it it's consistent to do yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. Both applications. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. I want to work to get by that word. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> uh, it's okay. And it's it's just fine. But the, the way I, I make the forms very easy to, to use online, huh. but there's a lot of editing in the background to do that. And to add the word, I have to undo all the editing to add the word. So. Sorry about that. Um, Is that important? I can do it. I just say that it should be consistent. So if you're going to do it for one, you should do it for both. If you're not going to do it for either, then I'm... I think we use that that language for our subdivision and the other permits too, right? It's an application. The, both of them say like one of the, the one the flood one at the top says applicant name, and the building permit one says signature applicant at the bottom. So that depends on there. Would someone like to make a motion? To approve the the building uh, permit with the change or without the change, uh, I'll I'll make a motion to accept the uh, the two documents as presented by Bill. The other one already exists. Which one? The, the flood hazard one. Well, we were making a, a change to the top, or no? I'm just. <clears throat> I I, okay. I don't necessarily okay. think that we have to because he has an applicant name on there. It, it should be clear, and uh, so I don't have any overarching need to put the word application on either of those. So I was just making a motion to accept. And if we don't have to make a motion, if we don't have to do anything to the a flood hazard area development permit, then I will just make a motion to accept the. Um, informational building permit uh, form as presented. I second that. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Without the word application. Without yeah. the word application. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So on a related topic, um, I was at the select board meeting the other night, <clears throat> and I just mentioned since we were, we have been updating the flood hazard permit that perhaps we could look at adopting river corridors in town. And what that would do is River corridors take into consideration how rivers and, and, and large streams uh, meander, you know, naturally. Um, so there's a wide, in many cases, the river corridor is wider than the, the special flood hazard area. And there's a river corridor all along the river, you know, even beyond the special flood hazard area. So one of the incentives to adopt these river corridors is that uh, in a federally declared disaster uh, for a municipal assistance, there's more money that can come to the town. If, if, that's, if, if there's damage in a river corridor. Is that if there's, yeah, damage, you know, if there's debris that has to, um, no, it doesn't have to be in the river corridor. What you do in the river corridor is put some restrictions on development and things like that. No new okay. structures and things like that. But it would apply townwide if there was a federally declared disaster and help with cleanup, uh, fixing roads, you know, et cetera. So I asked them if, if they would just want, if they wanted to start by looking at a map that would show where all the river corridors are, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the special flood hazard areas. And they said, yes. So we'll do that in a couple of weeks and, and 
So a river court is defined uh, by who? Shit, let me ask the other. Who defines the river borders? Um, well, I, you know, I think you know the state does, and the state maps them, um, and then consults oh. with FEMA. Okay. Um, about that. So, we, in order to for us to get something together, we'd have to go to the state and see, and just get a copy of what they have. Yeah, they, they've got, you know, if, if it gets that far, they've got some model regulations okay, yeah. and some standalone ones uh, for towns without zoning that, you know, they prefer you use, you know, everything in there, but but the towns don't have to okay. as long as they get the most important things. And that would just be a check off with the state on whether enough of those important things okay. are in there. I, I was just trying to, to understand whether we would have to do that or right. whether there's something to start with and, and you answer it yeah so we would be adopting language that already exists and just applying it to our town plan yeah yeah um and, and you know we can change it if we want um there is a very um there's a very active floodplain manager uh for our area right now a new a new guy and uh active in the sense that you know he, he loves doing this stuff with towns working with them okay <clears throat> so that'll be on a future agenda. Yeah. Right. Would would he come down and talk to us about it? Or is this something that doesn't really need that? Uh he he could. He could. Um I, I think I'd like Norm to get a little more direction from the select board before we use his time. Sure. Makes sense. He's his his area is Addison, Rutland, and Bennington counties. So I think he probably has a lot of evening meetings. <laughs> okay. I would, I would suspect so. Yeah. Just when Okay. We, yeah. Well, it's just when we've done some of these things in the past, it's been helpful to have somebody from the state. We've, we've yeah. had that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll look into that. Yep, well, definitely. But maybe we want to read the model ordinances first, you know, and then have informed questions. I'll send that out. I'll send it to Bill. Or, well, maybe I'll send it out since he's going on vacation. <laughs> So I think that covers the new business, um, old business, the informational building permit update that um, also should include the questionnaire. I did have a conversation with the town attorney, Kevin Brown, and, um, you know, he's, he's fine with the permit, permit application, whatever is, is what it is. Um, I shared with him the questionnaire that we'd come up with for new construction and he he said it was fine uh we've probably pushed the ordinance as far as we can go without being a zoning town but he did suggest that that perhaps the planning commission take one last look at that to see if there are any changes we want to make with that uh, but the questionnaire is okay. Uh, he suggests we run it by the select board, make sure they know what we're doing. And then we talked a little bit about, you know, the, the purpose behind all of this is for the planning commission to know what's going on, but also for the town to know that we want to know. And, you know, there's some things that we're, we're looking for and we need to know, listers need to know. So we talked about doing more education. Um, he mentioned, Bill, that you wanted to make sure the town clerk, both the both the people in the town clerk's office, know to to you know send those types of requests to you. And we can up the civil penalty maximum it can go up to 800 now it's much less than that it's yeah 
we can do that and we can do the the per day um, penalty up to eight hundred dollars a day but he thought that most people his suggestion was that since most people go to a website now to find out information some will call bill but most will probably go online that we that it would probably help us get the message out if this was a little more prominent on the town website that we have we have this ordinance and that we have a a, a permit application so Bill, I know you've got a lot of competing interests <laughs> for that. Right now, it's it's kind of buried. It's what under government, and then you look at you look for ordinances and. Well, no, it's government per permits and forms. Yeah, and then you go down a long list. It, well, yeah, but we, we have a list of all of them. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, do you have do you have any solutions, Bill, for um, people who are you know, thinking about construction, but. So we have, we, Carrie and I have been working on a list of frequently asked questions and we have a page that is, uh, she's got a couple that she's got to fill in the answers for. And then we've got a page that's going to be up there and that is going to have a link on the homepage uh, to the frequently asked questions. And it'll be, that is, that is, it's covered in a couple different topics in there. So, and on that page, there'll be links right to the permits and forms individually so okay i think you know it's it's difficult because you know there's only so much real estate on the home page and you know if i start adding to the banner it's just going to make the banner overwhelming to look at so and it's not really going to give us i think the effect that we're looking for i'm all, I'm all for calling it out I'm all, I'm all for making it you know making it making it seen but i think I, you know, if we if we overwhelm the the top of the page, it's just going to make things cluttered. Could there be a link to <clears throat> um, frequent areas and permits and forms would have its own link on the homepage on in the body, or is that not feasible? You do already. Oh, you do. Okay, so I missed it. <laughs> yeah, right at the bottom of the page, we have a, a whole section of quick links, and one of them is permits and forms. It's already there. Okay. But that is a long list of permits and forms. It's well, the ordinance list. list is really yeah, I mean, long. It's, but... it's, you know, so, so then we look at like, okay, so do we break it down? How do, how do we break it down? Or, you know, how do, but then, then if we break it down, we're creating more pages after that point. So they're broken up by category. When we, we talked about, um, like Carrie and I were talking about how to advertise for like due dates for taxes and whatnot. And, well, and then the topics of like, well, probably put bill stuffers and, and, and tax bills and stuff like that. And the, the, there comes a point where we, we said, there's only so much that we should have to do to try and get that message out. You know, we, I, I do put, I put it on social media. I, I do posts on there. You know, we, we, we talk about it at, at meetings, stuff like that. And, and this was the argument of, the person that we ended up giving the violation to, he says, well, I didn't know. And we talked about this exactly. way to organize it. And we said, how much more responsibility do you want to put on the town to notify you when you could just go there, search for a building permit and it comes up? Like, Or call the office and say, what are the, the, so the taxes? It comes to? a point when we can only do so much because there's so many different things out there that it, it becomes... Care did you all get the postcard for for your voting district yeah yeah so we've had people coming in voting early and carrie says she's been asking everybody about that and she's like what number was on your postcard They're like i don't know she's like did you read it they said, yeah we looked at it, it said we said it's our our polling place didn't change so we threw it away no no one everybody coming in she says it's extremely low numbers of people that actually read the information and it versus just seeing the thing that says your polling place didn't change oh, okay good so we are we literally did a, a, a spent time and money to have, to educate people about voting and it's it's just not not being effective so well they saw what they wanted to see 
<laughs> and that's the thing. So, you know, I get calls all the time from developers asking about our zoning regulations all the time. Yeah. Because there is, and I can't, it's not on our website, but there's an archived something out there that has the draft zoning documents that were created and posted at one point, And they come up. If you search Rutland Town Zoning, they come up. <laughs> and so if, if I'm getting calls from out-of-state developers all the time, I, I think our town residents can, you know, we have, like I said, you know, government and then permits and forms and they're all there. Or we have right at the bottom page permits and forms. Like, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, if we, I try to save the, I try to save the banner for like, Right now, it's Town Line Road is closed on Monday. That's important. You know, the, you need a building permit. That's a regular everyday thing. It's not something to call out. Like, you know, and I, I can, I can, I, I will guarantee you, I get more traction out of a social media post when we get two or three or four thousand views than we do by putting anything on the banner of the website. Is there room on the frequently asked questions? Part that you're working up with Carrie to add this and, and do a direct link. Oh, I, there, there's two sections on it directly, and they are directly linked to to them. Yes. Okay. Uh, you already you already included already them. there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I guess we could see if i mean we could do some other we could do facebook yeah I, and... i've also looked at other towns like I, I i i look at other towns websites and i steal ideas from them all the time i have yet to see one that says on the home page a building permit required there's links to here's our here's our zoning regulations and here's our here's our per, here's our town clerk here's our town manager and you know here's here's a link to the permits Every, there, i have yet to see one that calls out on the homepage that, hey, you, you have to have a building permit in our town. It's just, I think. That's would, true, but. Would be unusual. I think it's more unusual now for someone to expect there to not be one in any town than it be than to expect to, 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 to not have to do it. Well, I mean, I, I think in a town like ours, people are increasingly thinking there's there's less regulation than there is not sure where because, that. i agree i'm not sure why they're getting that impression because just yeah. because we don't have zoning doesn't mean we don't have you know and that's then that's some of the things i talk about on the frequently asked questions i talk about like you know uh building adjacent to property lines and things like that because those questions come up a lot and you know where, where are my property lines and you know things that that you know are are would be covered under zoning. but I, I have a specific question what are the zoning regulations around the town none like just good that it's a little more drawn up than that, but you know, we don't, we don't have any, but we do require building permits, you know? So, and you know, none of these permits are expensive or difficult to complete. Some people do a better job than others, but. Right. Right. But, you know, we started this months ago yep. because we weren't being informed. Yep. And you weren't being informed either. It's gotten better. We're getting them on a, I mean, you know, the problem is we don't know the gap, right? We know what we're getting, which is more than we used to get, which was none. <laughs> but it's like, what are we, what are we missing? There's no way to know. And if we do all this work, which I, I'm all, I'm all for getting the information out there. That, that's, it's absolutely worthwhile. But if we put 50 hours of work, a hundred hours of work into this, we're never we're first of all we're never going to know how many more applications we got because of that work right but if somebody wasn't going to do it before is that going to make them do it now i don't know maybe we need a case study <laughs> done of the most recent experience <laughs> I, I think i think the real question is uh, the problem we're trying to solve yeah and if we don't have a problem there's not i mean relatively speaking if we don't have a major problem, then we shouldn't be investing a major amount of time trying to solve something that isn't. And I don't know if that's the situation, but in terms of investment of time, we want to invest your time where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. And if we have a, a clearly delineated problem as a result of even anecdotal information that says that people don't understand something, then we should address it. If we take the... Um, 
uh, the change in voting districts, as an example, people for the longest time have had a stereotypical image in their head about where they go to vote and what that means. And even a well-informed person cannot have the full scope of the change. I'll consider myself one of them. Until I came to the town clerk's office and asked for a copy of the a sample ballot, yep. I didn't realize that voting district two now wraps around three quarters of the donut hole, as opposed to being combined and, and with a whole with chunk of Rutland City. Is it yeah. two or four? No, four. No, yeah. four. Uh, four includes the chunk of Rutland City. Yes, but two wraps from uh, North Seven, yeah. Clarendon, all the way down all to around. Clarendon and practically to Menden. Yeah. yeah, and now Voting District Four is the northeast quadrant of um, Rutland Town and the northeast section of the city. Now I knew that there was a a change in redistricting. I had no idea what the scope of that was and what the impact was going to be in terms of those presenting themselves as representatives, not state senators, because that's countywide, yep. but for uh, representatives. Yep. And so the implication for that for the average citizen is huge. It's huge. And if you get a if you get a card and you ex explain that and they say, whoa, this is complicated. At least I know where I'm going and where I have to yep. go to vote. And that's that, that's what they want to keep. They want to keep yeah. it as simple as that, that my polling place hasn't changed. Yeah. And Carrie explained that to me. Yeah. Not that I was concerned, right. but, you know, the concern that we're running the, that she said she's heard is that somebody says, well, I want to vote for this person. They're not <laughs> your in your district anymore. You can't vote for them. Yeah. But I want to. You can't. Like, and see, that's that's the big thing. Right. That's the big shift. Yes. So uh, now when you're talking about uh, the House uh, of Representatives, the, you know, the state house, you are those who are running in your district are now eligibly eligible to receive your vote. But for district two, Tom Terenzini, and who's the other one, Paul? What's his Tom name? Terenzini's not running. Oh, he's not running. He's not on the ballot. No, he's not. Oh, it's okay. just Paul Clifford. Um, Paul so, Clifford. So, okay. how are you bringing this back around to? So, I'm bringing this back around because when we make changes and things have not been uh, the, the regular practice, that if there's a if there's a complication to it, there is going to be some confusion. Now, a confusion. Now, a form that should have been filled out and the people haven't been, that's just a question of letting them know each time that they come yeah. in. And that will pass word of mouth, and that's pretty simple. But a change such as the voting change is much more complicated. It the is. more complicated our changes are, and the more novel those changes are, the more we need to invest time and energy into yeah. getting the word out. So I'm just saying, I'm not, uh, I'm not able to evaluate the... Uh, the level of complexity that this represents compared to the voting, but I was using voting as one extreme sure. and this perhaps as another. So, so what if, what maybe we, we're going to have an opportunity in a couple of weeks, maybe at your booth, because you all are going to be there to help volunteer because I'm going to be there all day. Um, <laughs> so maybe we ask people to come by, like, first of all, do you know building permits are required in Rutland Town? That's great. Just ask them. Yep. Are, are you resident around town? Do you know building permits? Have you ever had to put one in before? And what was your experience? And they're all going to say, they're, they're going to say, yes or no, they didn't know. Most of them are going to say, no, I didn't do it. Or if anybody says it does, they're going to say it was really easy because it is really easy. And, you know, the other thing we could do is we could have Larry Delvinieri do a little public information sign at the transfer station because he sees more town residents on a given week than anybody yeah. does. Yeah, he's got that bulletin board there he too. Does. And he's not afraid to use it. No. So <laughs> that think, would be great. But I think if as as part of your energy survey, you know, efforts at the townwide celebration, just ask people about this. And you know, it's like it's just ask people, you know, we don't need to take anything official, but just ask them if they've heard of it. Do you know we had to do you know we have one? Have you ever done one? And what was your experience? And just I bet you it's gonna be largely 
And if somebody has a complaint, I'll be right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yep. So should well, I'm not opposed to putting on the home. I know this all started with putting on the homepage and Kevin's idea. It's a good idea. It just become you know, I I almost worry like even the banner at the top of the page. Um, what I was going to suggest, Bill, is that with the frequent with the FAQ, the yeah. FAQ, uh, we do some some additional outreach and and see where that gets us. So here, here's the here's what it looks like. Here's the homepage, and this is the banner we have right now. And I, I have, besides like road closures, office closures, last minute things, I've really left it alone for those things. Like, you know, just see, seeing our calendar, and the calendar gets a lot of attention. But over here on the right, where it says Rutland Town notices. Mm -hmm. yeah right here is gonna be the frequent last questions. And it's almost, you know, either the top or the bottom of that list is the best place to be. And I'm putting it at the bottom of the list. So um, I think that will, I think that'll do some good. I mean, we can look at some redesign. We can look at some layout changes with our, with our vendor too. But when it comes to like layout and like permanent changes like that, there's a lot that goes into this page and, and we're redoing some of the stuff at the top. So I may be able to add the frequent last questions like FAQ at the top of the menu, like mm -hmm. at the top of the picture. So there's something to be able to do for that too. But um, we're our website's come a long way from what it, from what it was. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think that um, you know there, there's some there's some things we can do. But uh, my my concern about putting the thing like the building permit on the homepage is it, it's it, it's there's things that we get asked more often than that that are would be more worthy of the spot okay yeah. bill does uh, our website have the uh, capacity like some websites do that has an informational box that will pop up uh uh not as something that you put on the home page but it just flashes uh before you access the page you have to click out of it that's a great way to uh provide information and then you could have a link in there and you put it on for a, a, a short period of time. It could be a week, a month, whatever it happens to be. And then you take it down after you, as you're introducing something new, that's a great way for something new to, to be there for people to know the look or to ask. And I don't know if we have the capacity to do that. I don't, I don't know what the, if our platform has the functionality, yeah. but I can, I can find out. It's know. just, it, it's just a, it's a useful way to put something on for a short period of time. Yep. Uh, or if there's a special event coming up, and that's where that banner, you know, the yellow banner. That's, that's and I saw that. That's yep. what we use. And that that is there. That's definitely a, a a color that is adverse to everything else there on purpose to right. make, make you see. And it's stuff. red, and all the lettering is red, so uh, yeah, it sticks so, out. Yeah. When I when I could change the color of lettering, that's not that's not a big deal. But but yeah, so we 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 can look at that, and you know, I'm hoping that the frequent last questions, you know, people tend to gravitate to that. I think that kind of function more when they go someplace they haven't seen before websites they haven't seen before and they don't want to look for something great what's my frequent question because if i have the question why someone else has too so it'll be right there and it's it's probably boy we probably got 12 to almost maybe tw almost 15 or 20 topics right now on there and we haven't even started it we, we haven't even made it live yet we've already got that many so you know there's a lot of stuff that we get regular phone calls about so yeah right. could i ask that it be somewhere in close to the beginning of that particular question that it <clears throat> referred to development in the town? So my first, the first one is, do, we, do I need a building permit? The first question is that. Okay. Uh, I don't have categories, that gets more complicated. So what it's gonna be is there's gonna be like a list of questions. And then you like say the first question is, do I need a building permit? You, you can click on that and it'll just bring you down the page to, to that topic. So if we're trying to do categories. It makes it more complicated. The layout gets more complicated. Okay. And you can put a bookmark in to take you to the section that's yeah. relevant to your question. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Right to the permit. Yeah, right, right to the right to the answer to the question, and then in that answer is a link to the page. So, okay. okay. Um, 
Is this satisfactory with everyone? That we go this route with the frequently asked questions and, and try to get more outreach out there? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Next item is the, speaking of the town-wide celebration, August 27th. We're, we're pretty well set there. Uh, Mary Beth, can you still squeeze in a couple hours? Yeah, I'm thinking the afternoon, so like okay. noon to two. Okay. Um, and Andy, I think, can do the morning. He can, he can do a couple of hours and myself. So I think we're all set there. And uh, we'll have a table tent uh we'll have the new energy survey we'll have that pocket park uh, map with suggestions and we'll do something with the building permit not quite sure what but they've ordered a lot of food so come hungry <laughs> Okay, down to announcements and other news. Anybody have any updates or anything like the? You should look to you, Mary Beth. So I, not not this time. Nope, not this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go down to the approval of the July 14th minutes. Move to approve the minutes of July 14th. Is there a second? Second up. Thanks, Howard. And any discussion or suggestions? Oh, Norm has something oh sorry norm no problem i just had a couple little questions i'm not sure that they need corrections but uh and under new business number one uh there is interest in opening a retail store front or just retail store um uh, i think it go <laughs> could go either way um and, you know, I, I think the options are still open for them, whether it's going to be a storefront or a store. What's the difference? Um, <clears throat> the storefront's usually connected with other stores, I guess. I don't know. I, I it's did not, not think that it was worth... Um, I, go ahead. Oh, sure. I, I was going to say what I... I wasn't here and I read it and I didn't find it misleading at all. No, I didn't. Okay. Either. Same thing. Okay. That's fine. Um, I really didn't have anything else. Okay. Yeah. They were great. So I'll call the question. All those in favor of the minutes as Bill so expertly pre prepared for us. Say aye, please. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm abstaining. I wasn't here. I was also I, I was also not here, so I'll abstain as well. Okay. Okay. Pass the so minute. motion passed with two abstentions, right? Okay. Now entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. A second. Okay. I'll let no one take that one.